Drag affects nearly everything we do in an aircraft. As pilots, we tend to inherently understand some parts of how it works, while other aspects remain shrouded in mystery. So today, let's pull the veil off of what is really holding you back. Drag is one of the four forces of flight that opposes thrust and acts rearward on an aircraft. To understand how it works, let's break it down into its two components, parasite and induced. Parasite drag occurs as the aircraft impacts air particles. The faster you go, the more air you hit, and the more drag you make. Accelerating the aircraft past VNE will produce so much drag that the structural integrity of the aircraft may fail. Induced drag occurs as a byproduct of producing lift using angle of attack. As such, there is very little induced drag until stall speed. After stall speed, induced drag gradually decreases as angle of attack is reduced. The place these drag lines cross is called LD max and is the point at which the aircraft is at its most slippery. Hence, this is the aircraft's most efficient speed and its best glide speed. Parasite drag is a result of the equal and opposite reaction caused by impacting air particles with the aircraft. There are three subsets of parasite drag, or in other words, three ways that parasite drag occurs. Profile drag, skin friction drag, and interference drag. Profile drag occurs as the profile of the aircraft impacts air molecules. For most aircraft, most of the time, the forward profile is what determines how much drag is created. The size of the profile and the angle of impact both play a role in how much drag a shape creates. This type of drag is intuitive for many people so let's move on to skin friction drag. Skin friction drag occurs due to a combination of the surface properties of an object and the viscosity of the fluid it interacts with. Every surface has some sort of imperfection if you look close enough. These small imperfections create friction as air passes by. which resists forward motion and causes drag. The rougher the surface is, like in the case of frost formation, the more drag will be created. Even if the surface was completely smooth, viscosity would still create skin friction drag due to the electrostatic attraction of the passing air molecules. As the atoms of the air get close to the atoms of the wing, they are attracted towards each other by electrostatic attraction. This force is strong enough that the atoms closest to the surface come to a complete stop. This layer of stagnant air is called the boundary layer. The electrostatic attraction of subsequent layers of atoms weakens so that they are slowed at lesser intervals until the free stream airflow is reached. The slowing of these layers causes drag and slows the aircraft. The more viscous the fluid is, the thicker the boundary layer becomes, and the more skin friction drag is created. The next type of parasite drag is called interference drag. Interference drag occurs when the airflow from one component interferes with the smooth airflow of another component. This interference causes turbulent air currents that impact the side of the structure and increase parasite drag creation. This is most common at attachment points for wings, landing gear, antennas, etc. Fairings are often placed around these connection points to help ease convergent airflow streams together and minimize the creation of interference drag. Now that we understand how air particle impacts create parasite drag, 
let's take a look at how drag can be induced by lift production. To understand how creating lift also creates drag, we must first introduce the concept of lift vectors. An airfoil produces force approximately 90 degrees to the cord line of the wing. This force is usually pointed upwards, so we call it lift. However, when the aircraft is maneuvered, this is no longer the case. In our example, let's say that the airfoils are creating 1,000 pounds of force, and the aircraft is banked to 45 degrees. This force must now be vectored out into its respective components. In this case, 500 pounds of force comprises the vertical component of lift, and another 500 pounds of force now makes up the horizontal component of lift. If the aircraft weighs 1,000 pounds, it will now start to descend unless the vertical component of lift is increased to 1,000 pounds. The horizontal component of lift is now what pulls the aircraft into the turn and changes its direction of travel. If the aircraft is maneuvered around the pitch axis, the same thing occurs. Only now, we have a vertical component of lift and a rearward component of lift. The rearward component of lift is induced drag. If we had a magical wing that could somehow fly at 90 degrees angle of attack without stalling, 100% of the force generated would be induced drag. As speed increases and the need for angle of attack is diminished, less and less induced drag is produced. Until zero angle of attack is reached and there is no longer any induced drag created. So remember, the faster you go, the more air you hit, which will increase parasite drag due to profile, skin friction, and interference drag. As you slow down past LD max, you enter the backside of the power curve, and induced drag becomes primary. The higher your angle of attack becomes, the more force is vectored rearward. And that is what is really holding you back. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this content helpful. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.